So I'm thinking I should have got my wife to wrap this around my head before I thought about any of this. Now nothing to do with the way the build was, but just me in general. Oh, I'm gonna do this down so it doesn't look as plastic. Blah, blah, blah. Matt it, look a little more authentic. And probably also add God knows how much extra time onto the build. And I basically made it totally awkward for myself. But I'm not bothered because it's fun. Depends how you want to approach it. You can either let it get you down or enjoy it. Now, with it being a new style of build from the Tamayas, I am personally enjoying it. But if you are new to building like a Vakert Volvo, or you've currently been building one, and you are getting to that paint stage, and you're thinking, I'm going to paint this, I'm going to paint that, and this part of the cab, or whatever, if you want to detail extra few bits. For example, um, here on my table, I have the air intake for up the back. Now, this is 15 pages after the point of where I am now starting for the paint phase. So what I would recommend to anyone is, go to the end of the manual and work your way backwards. Not build it backwards, but study the manual backwards. Because this air tank, now I want it dulling down take this plastic shine away from it all and uh, give it a more of a matte finish as you would find. Uh, however, if you look here, if I was to leave that to the point of having it all painted up in bits, I'm then going to have to glue it all together to then put it to the truck. Because it, as it later shows, you do need to construct it. And same with the fenders and all the little fender brackets. Do you want those little brackets to match the colour of your truck? Now these are all things you've got to take into consideration. In my case, I personally would like it all matching. So I'm going to have to attach the brackets all down to the inner fenders to then be painted. Bear in mind while we're on the brackets and inner fenders. Now if you're one of them who like to have everything pre-drilled before you paint, I do. I don't want to risk cracking the paintwork or damaging it once I've painted it. So down the back, and this hole and this one, and all these tiny little holes. And if you look here in the manual, you need a 1.4 mil drill bit. If you're going to paint that, then I would highly recommend going to the back of the manual, like I say, working your way back and then you're not going to come across all these little points at a later date which could potentially, I don't know, it could cause damage to your build, it may not cause damage to your build, but is it a risk you want to take when you've come this far? So we've got that with the back of the cab. Um, I've marked out in the manual here and there and bits which need to be doing beforehand like the visor which goes along the front of the cab. You can see here, it's not screwing up all to its brackets before installing to the cab. Now, I have to decide at this point, do I want my brackets a different colour? Do I want them the standard kit, like plastic? Or do I want them to match the visor? And they're all little, little things that you have to take into consideration. There is a lot more to take into consideration than building up like your basic to my truck. Now, if you build one um, 24 Atelier kits and stuff like that and the little revels, then this shouldn't be a problem and you should already be one step ahead of everyone else building a Vakert Volvo because you're basically just upscaling it and making it easier for yourself. So, credit to you guys who build them tiny models. So here, I basically have the start of my priming phase. Now, it's all the tanks mainly. Uh, stuff which is to go on the back of the cab, like the Susie bar and stuff like that. Stuff that I want painting in more of an aluminium finish rather than black plastic or silver plastic as the tanks were. So I'm basically getting all the aluminium phase out of the way first and anything I want matte blacking like the um, air filters 
and this big air tank here which was under the back of the cab which leads up to the air pipe which goes at the back which I have to construct and um, that'll be matte black so there's lots of little things to plan uh, so I am just going to keep you updated with videos like this basically throughout the build and these next few phases so do drop a comment down below if this is pissing you off or you would just rather wait but I'd rather keep you guys informed and the progress because as I come across stuff I can share it with you and we can kind of learn together as we go along I will be opting through the right hand drive dash there but as you can see from just looking in the manual to building up the interior I have to work out if that's going to affect anything else I'm going to be doing within my build because I ain't keeping my interior all plain grey and green I will be painting some of that as well it's personal preference and it's the world of RC you can do what you want and let your imagination run wild and that's the great thing about it and I'm going for a different theme on this truck to what I normally would getting your head around how, when, where you prep, paint, what <laughs> is uh, it's all a new experience a bit different to the little kit cars that you used to build as a kid too just so much more the mirrors I like all those like colour coordinating and stuff so there's just tons and tons of stuff to do and tons of little fiddly bits to paint and then sand and file and everything else blah 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 so just before I leave you guys to go and do a bit more priming, um, I will be back when I construct some more stuff like this. May as well do it all separate, keep with the manual and help you guys. Um, but before I do let you go, a uh, little top tip on spraying. And because you have to like lie them flat on something, because there's nowhere to grip them with a helping hand. Um, if I was to spray this now, and then come back to it later, it's going to peel itself off and potentially damage the paint. So for parts with a flat edge like this, all I have done is took a couple of little spots of blue tack. I think I have another video from years ago using this same tip. So I shall drop that in a card just above here. Well then you can put that down onto your paint surface and it shall leave you a gap underneath like so therefore preventing your parts sticking to the cardboard or whatever surface you're working on so a nice easy tip keep it simple keep it clean and uh, I shall be back in another video very very soon ciao for now guys <laughs>